How do nuts boost fat burning within the body? A paper out of Texas A&M last year suggests that it may be the arginine content of nuts. How does arginine get the job done? Uh, they're not sure. The underlying mechanisms are likely complex at molecular, cellular, and whole body levels. In other words, they have no clue. But they do review the evidence that it may involve the stimulation of mitochondrial biogenesis, more power plants per cell, and uh, brown adipose tissue development, which is what our body uses to generate body heat, so we'd be converting more of our fat into heat. Either way, they suspect arginine to play an important role in fighting the current global obesity epidemic. Well then, where in the diet can we find arginine? I'll give you a hint. According to the CDC, 78 million Americans aren't getting enough. So you know the top few sources have got to be in healthy foods, because no one's getting any. And indeed, here's the list for the top 15 food sources of arginine you'd likely find in a typical store. Number one, isolated soy protein, uh, which is what they make uh, veggie burgers and meat-free hot dogs and the like out of. Number two, Pumpkin seeds and squash seeds. Uh, number four, watermelon seeds. Isn't that crazy? Not as crazy as number five, fried pork rinds. I'm not kidding. Uh, maybe Americans should be getting more than I think. Number six, barbecue flavor uh, pork rinds. It must just uh, concentrate in the skin. Uh, number seven, sesame seeds. Number eight, peanuts. Uh, number nine, soybeans. Uh, number 10, peanut butter. And then tahini, sesame seed paste. Uh, almonds, number 13, pine nuts, number 14, fava beans, and number 15, sunflower seeds. So, basically, soy, seeds, nuts, and beans for arginine. Although dried beluga whale meat evidently has a lot, the first non-pork rind animal food that you can actually find in a typical store clocks in the USDA database at number 95th down the list, bacon. What accounts for the thermogenic effect of nuts, their purported ability to boost metabolism such that one could potentially burn more fat just sleeping or sitting around? An explanation for this rise of resting energy expenditure is not obvious. The Texas A&M folks thought it was the arginine, but others recently suggested it may be a function of the flavonoid phytonutrients in nuts. Based on what kind of evidence? Studies like this. The effects of Concord grape juice on appetite, diet, and body weight. Just as nuts are calorically dense, yet don't seem to cause weight gain, Welch's was keeping their fingers crossed that the same would be found for purple grape juice. They had people guzzle down two cups a day for three months. Now, you got to understand, Welch's grape juice has more sugar than Coca-Cola. Two cups of purple grape juice contains the equivalent of 20 spoonfuls of sugar. The control group was basically given a grape Kool-Aid, a substitute grape-flavored drink, uh, same number of calories, same amount of sugar, but just no detectable phytonutrients. So at two cups a day, they were giving hundreds of extra calories a day to these people. Surely after three months they'd gain a couple pounds. What do you think they found? The grape-flavored sugar water group did indeed gain a significant amount of weight. How could they not with all that extra added sugar in their diet? But the grape juice people didn't. In fact, are you ready for this? Their waist circumference significantly shrank. They appeared to burn away significantly more tummy fat by drinking grape juice. So maybe there is something to the theory put forth by the nut and green tea people that Flavonoid phytonutrients are capable of increasing thermogenesis, heat generation, and fat oxidation. If true, then it's just one more reason to eat nuts and drink green tea, not grape juice. Instead, eat Concord grapes.
During World War I, it was discovered that many of the chemicals for the new explosives they were working on had toxic or even lethal effects on the workers in the munitions factories. Chemicals such as dinitrophenol, or DNP, boost metabolism so much workers were found somewhere along the road after work covered in sweat, with a temperature of 106 degrees Fahrenheit, or even 109 before they die, and then even after death their temperatures keep going up like a total body meltdown. But at subacute doses, workers claim to have grown thin to a notable extent after several months working with the chemical. That got some Stanford pharmacologists excited about the promising metabolic applications of DNP. One dose, and our resting metabolic rate jumps up 30%, an actual fat-burning drug. People started losing weight, no apparent side effects as a result of their weight-reducing treatment. On the contrary, they felt great, until thousands of people started going blind, and users started dropping dead from hyperpyrexia, fatal fever from the heat created by the burning fat. Of course, it continued to be sold. Here at last is a weight-reducing remedy that will bring a figure men admire and women envy without danger to your health or change your regular mode of living. No diet, no exercise. It did work, but the therapeutic index was razor thin, a razor thin difference between the effective dose and the deadly dose. It was not until thousands suffered irreversible harm that it got pulled from the market, until, of course, it was brought back by the internet for those dying to be thin. There is a way. Our body naturally burns fat to create heat, though. When we're born, we go from a nice tropical 98.6 in our mother's womb straight to room temperature, and we're all wet and slimy. This represents a challenge for thermoregulation, for maintaining our warm body temperature. As an adaptive mechanism, the appearance of our unique organ around 150 million years ago allowed mammals to maintain our high body temperatures. That unique organ is called brown adipose tissue, or BAT, whose role is to consume fat calories by generating heat in response to cold exposure. The white fat in our bellies stores fat, but the brown fat, located up between our shoulder blades, burns fat. It's essential for the thermogenesis, the creation of heat in newborns, but it's considered kind of unnecessary in adults, has been considered unnecessary, who have you know, higher metabolic rates and increased muscle mass for shivering to warm us up if we ever get cold. So we used to think it was just, just kind of shrank away when we grew up. But if it was there, well, then it could potentially make a big difference for how many calories we burn every day, but supposedly we outgrew it. But when PET scans were invented to detect metabolically active tissues like cancer, Oncologists kept finding hot spots in the neck and shoulder regions that on CT scan turned out to be not cancer, just fat. Then some observant radiologists noticed they appeared in patients mostly during the cold winter months. And when we looked closer at tissue samples taken from people who had undergone neck surgery, we found it. Brown fat in adults. The common message from these studies is that BAT is present and active in adults, and the more we have, the more active it is, the thinner we are. And we can rapidly activate our fat-burning brown fat by exposure to cold temperatures. For example, you hang out in a cold room for two hours in your undies and put your legs on a block of ice for four minutes every five minutes, and you can elicit a marked increase in energy expenditure thanks to brown fat activation. So hey, these studies point to a potential Natural intervention to stimulate energy expenditure, turn down the heat, and burn calories, and reduce your carbon footprint in the process. But thankfully for those of us who would rather not lay our bare legs on blocks of ice, our brown fat can also be activated by some food ingredients, such as those we'll cover in the next video. Until about 10 years ago, brown adipose tissue was considered to be biologically active only in babies and small children, generating heat by burning fat. But 
there is now no doubt that active brown fat is present in adult humans, involved in cold-induced increases in whole body calorie expenditure, and thereby the control of body temperature and how fat we are. In 2013, researchers showed that one could activate brown adipose tissue if you chill out people long enough. Two hours of cold exposure every day for six weeks, which can lead to a significant reduction in body fat. Although they demonstrated the effective recruitment of human brown fat, it would seem difficult to increase exposure to cold in daily life. Thankfully, our brown fat can also be activated by some food ingredients such as capsaicin, the compound that makes hot peppers hot. Whereas increased physical activity is usually recommended to increase energy expenditure, specific food components such as capsaicin are known to burn off calories and fat. A significant rise in energy expenditure within 30 minutes of eating the equivalent of a jalapeno pepper. Normally, when we cut down on calories, our metabolism slows down, undercutting our weight loss attempts. But sprinkling a third of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper powder onto our meals counteracts the metabolic slowdown and promotes fat burning. They wanted to try giving them more to try to match some of the studies done in Asia, but they were working with Caucasians. And there's a difference in maximum tolerable dose of red chili pepper between Asians and Caucasians. Take some Japanese women, you can boost the fat burned after a high-fat meal too, adding over a tablespoon of red pepper powder. We've known for decades that cayenne pepper increases metabolic rate, but we didn't know how. But now we have studies showing that this class of compounds increases energy expenditure in human individuals with brown fat, but not those without it, indicating that they increase expenditure straight off the bat. And there's all sorts of structurally similar flavor molecules in other foods, like black pepper and ginger. We expect to activate thermogenesis as well, but they haven't been directly tested. All these results suggest that the anti-obesity effects of pepper compounds are based on the heat-generating activity of recruited brown fat. Thus, repeated ingestion can mimic the chronic effects of cold exposure without having to freeze ourselves. Consumption of spicy foods may help us lose weight, but what about the sensory burn and pain on our tongues, and sometimes in our stomach as well as further on down? So are our only two options for boosting brown fat to freeze our legs or burn our butts? Arginine-rich foods may also stimulate brown adipose tissue growth and development through a variety of mechanisms, which just means eating more soy foods, seeds, nuts, and beans. Yes, when we eat nuts, we lose some fat in our feces and have our appetite suppressed, but studies suggest that this just accounts for about 70% of the disappeared calories in nuts. Unless all the calories are accounted for, then we still should gain weight after nut consumption, especially in the long term, but that's not what the studies show. So what happens to that last 30%? Well, nuts appear to boost our metabolism. Uh, meaning that when we eat nuts, we burn more of our own fat to compensate. And indeed, in this study, those on the control diet were burning about 20 grams of fat overnight within their bodies on average. Eh, not bad. That's like burning off five pats of butter. But the walnut group, eating the same number of calories, the same amount of fat, same everything, burn more like 31 grams of fat a day, seven or eight pats of butter's worth. Not too shabby, or should I say flabby. So the hard-to-crack nut of a mystery appears to have been solved. Of all the calories you eat in nuts, about 70% of them are apparently disappear through dietary compensation mechanisms, 10% are flushed away, and 20% may be lost due to increased fat burn, leaving us with no calories to pack on any pounds, just a whopping load of nutrition, and our risk of dying from heart disease cut in half.